One of the trickiest things to do in studio is get the flexible shapes to curve the way you want them to. In this video, I'm going to show you a few tricks on how to do that. So here are some flexible parts that I did in preparation for this video to show you how to use the flex tool. You can see that they are more or less in the correct shapes. So let's get into showing you how this tool works. The flexible parts can be found in two spots. Under the object category where you will find chains as well as you would expect under the flexible category where you'll find ribbed hoses, rigid hose, etc. When you click on one of these flexible parts, you're going to see a horseshoe shape. If you click on that, it will open the flexible options for that part. And as you see, we grab a part and we can start twisting it however we wish. If we click on either end of that part, we can move that end of the hose where we want to move it. As well, if we click on an end and we use the arrow keys, just like you would when rotating any other brick, you can change the facing of that end. The real trick to using flexible parts is having a lot of patience, especially when dealing with these rigid hoses that have so many interconnected parts to it. It's going to take you a while to get the shape exactly how you want it. But I'm gonna give you a few pointers on how to make that easier. Before I continue, a quick reminder about the Studio Lego Designers Facebook group. This group continues to grow and there's a lot of great contributions happening from all the members. It is a fantastic positive group to join and get your questions answered or offer advice or show off your works that you've created in studio. So if you wish to join that community, go on over to Studio Lego Designers Facebook page the link will be in the description below. As well, for those that don't know, I am a freelance commission Lego designer. So if you have a project you wish to see brought into reality in brick form, then please get in touch with me. Also, I create instructions for other designers. So if you have a design that you wish to have instructions created for it, please get in touch. Thank you so much. The first thing you want to think about is the length of the part because that's going to make a big difference on how that part is bending and turning. Just like in real life, those parts only have a certain finite length. So if you're pushing and pulling on one end, it's going to push and pull on the other end. So you really need to know what length you're going to want to deal with first of all. To determine the length, what I recommend doing is taking a brick and laying it up against the surface and just counting the number of studs so that you can get a good approximate length of the part that you need. For instance, here we have a 10 stud long brick and we have a 10 L long cable. Now let's say we want to put a curve in that 10 L rigid hose. What I recommend doing first of all is laying whatever you're going to work on flat against the ground. This is going to give you a better perspective of where that object sits on a plane. If you're having it in a vertical position and you are trying to manipulate it in all different planes, it's going to make it much more challenging. So take whatever you're working on and lay it so that it is facing horizontally so that you can shape your rod around that shape. 
Okay, let's grab a couple of clips. And we're just going to put these approximately where we want that pose to connect to. We will first try to figure out where the midpoint of those connections is going to be. Here it's pretty easy. We have our clip set four studs apart. So we know that it is going to be running somewhere about here. If you need to nudge that over by half a stud, just change your grid to half stud setting. Click T and then drag it over by half a stud. And of course we want it oriented in the perpendicular direction of the other two clips. I want to make sure that our rod is completely within half of that clip which it is. So then we click our flex tool. We're going to grab one end. Use the arrow key to change the orientation and it will slot in there. Then we'll grab the other end. Again, use the arrow, change the orientation and slot in there. So right away, it's looking not too bad. If we change our perspective though, we can see there's a bend up here. So we're going to have to correct that. Facing is really important when you are manipulating these flex tubes. So let's grab this one here. It's about in the middle of our curve. And if we push that up, it's going to push the rod up into the air some more, but we want that brought lower, so we're going to drag it down, and this will bring it closer to the same plane that our ground is on. So you'll notice that it keeps wanting to rebound to its original shape. So we're going to take our clips and move them one stud away. Now because this clip is going to be sliding along that hose, it might be easier for you to grab a plate underneath it so that you can get your reference better. So we're just going to grab a plate and now we can just drag that there. So again, click on your flexible tool. Notice how the kinks just immediately disappear from our hose because we removed the stress point so then we can move this clip and it's almost exactly where we want it to be. So we'll do the same on the other side. We'll remove that clip. Hit the flex tool and you see that it automatically relaxes and then we can just bring this back to where we want it. Use the connect tool to make sure it gets to the right spot. There we go. So we have our hose now nicely in a curve. So this is a good method if you want to get a simple bend in any of your flexible parts. What I recommend doing is every time that you create a flexible part like this, just put it in a library of curves for that piece. So just create a file, open it up, and put that curve in that file. If you ever need to use that specific curve again it's already going to be ready for you so just go and open the file and grab the part or you could use the custom sub model palette and just have it in there so you can pull it out when you need it so that one was pretty easy now we're going to go look at how we can get your chain parts to get into the shapes that we want them okay let's start again by clicking on the horseshoe shape Going to drag our end where we want it. And we have this big part up here that is now up in the air that we're going to have to fix. So chains are a bit more fiddly than the flexible hose. One of my suggestions to the dev team was to make it so that you could lock each segment and then you could work on the next segment. 
Another nice thing would be able to hinge the parts or use the T function to drag the parts where you want them. One thing you want to take into account when dealing with chain is if you have the chain too tight, it's going to spring back. So make sure you don't create a really taut connection for your chain. Leave a little bit of play in the chain and that will allow you to move the links around as you need. After a while of playing with it, you will get something like this. You may want to keep refining it until it gets to be a perfect curve, but this is a pretty good result after a few minutes of work. The last thing I wanted to show you was how to edit the string. So here's a string I did wrapping around a cylinder. One thing you'll notice right away is that this section isn't exactly a very nice curve. And the reason for that is if you click on the flexible parts for a string, the segments are equal to a chain. So this string works almost exactly like a chain. One thing it would be nice is if the string had segments closer to each other like they do in the flex tube. That would make it easier to curl the string around naturally. So here's a straight string and we'll get started on this. Here's a cylinder that we're going to wrap the string around. Click on our flex tool. We're going to move our head of the string here. Make sure to leave lots of play in the string so you can move everything around properly. And it's just a matter of playing with it until you get it to be where you want it. Now we can bring this end around again very carefully and slowly pulling everything where you want. It would also be really nice to have the option of doing Bezier curves with all of these flexible pieces. It would make doing shapes like this much easier. After a few minutes, you'll start to see the shape get where you want it. And as soon as you're happy, again, save the shape so that you can keep it for another build. Another thing I'm going to suggest to the devs is being able to add in or remove nodes from flexible parts. This is common practice in a lot of graphic design programs where you can manipulate nodes quickly and easily that way. So I think that that would offer a lot more power to be able to use these flexible parts. What I'm going to do next is go to the BrickLink Studio Development forum. I'm going to make a lot of these suggestions. If you have other ideas that you would like to see Studio do with the Flex tool, I suggest go there and under that topic, suggest those changes. And if you just support the stuff that I'm talking about, then please go on and just give it a plus one or give it a comment. So I hope what I've shown you will give you a bit of a foundation on how to use flexible tools a little better in studio. Please help me to help the dev team create a more powerful flexible tool option by going to that BrickLink forum and commenting on that post. Also, if this has helped you, please take the time to like, subscribe, and share it around to others who will benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Keep dreaming of bricks. Bye-bye.